The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know what the Pharisees, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The church has always been a rich, open vein to humorists. You know, especially when it comes to our openness to each other's denominations. For example, this one was told to me by a Roman Catholic priest friend of mine. It said two men were on an airplane when it developed engine trouble. It was clear that they were going to crash. And uh, one of them said to the other, well, this is it. We're going to die. We ought to do something religious. The other man said, you know, said he, he thought that that was a good idea. The first man said, well, you know, I'm not particularly religious. And the second man said, well, I'm not either. So, uh, they, but, we, you know, we really ought to do something. Well, the other man agreed with that. And so he said, you know, I used to live next door to a Roman Catholic church. And um, I could hear the services going on inside. I think I might be able to remember some of the words. Would those work? 
And the first man said, yeah, let's try that. He said, and the man thought, it began, the first is B3, the second is I9, the third is N22. Then there's one that a Mennonite friend of mine once told me about Episcopalians. He said, you know, Rick, you should be really glad to be an Episcopalian. You're going to get to heaven before anyone else. And not knowing better than to bite on such obvious bait, I asked why that was. And he said, because, as the scripture states, when the Lord comes again, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> You know, being able to laugh at our perceptions and at our own foibles is actually a sign of healthy acceptance and openness of each other. Not everyone, of course, feels so open and accepting, sort of like that student in a Sunday school class. And one day his teacher asked the class who all wanted to go to heaven, and immediately all the hands shot up in the air except for this one student. And the teacher was shocked by this dissenting hand and said, Charlie, you mean to tell me you don't want to go to heaven? And the little boy answered, sure, I want to go to heaven, but not with this bunch. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, you know, that's how many Christians and even churches feel about other churches and other people. And it must grieve the heart of God. Religious Prejudice and lack of openness to those who are different has always been with us. Consider our lesson from the gospel according to Matthew this morning. A Canaanite woman came to Jesus with a request. Her daughter was suffering severely from what she described as a demon. Jesus seemingly ignored her. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he explained. But the woman begged him, Lord, help me. And Jesus answered with an uncharacteristically harsh Judean proverb. It is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Dog, by the way, was a common term used by Israelites to describe anyone who wasn't Jewish. And that, by the way, would include you and me. The woman, however, is not to be denied. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus is suddenly impressed with this woman's response, with the faith that's implicit in what she's saying. And he turns to her and he says, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you as you desire. Now before we go on to the point here this morning... Let's unpack the shock that we all feel about what just happened here. How could Jesus have treated this woman with such disdain? Wasn't he the champion of the oppressed? The welcomer of those who were different, the outcasts, the, the unclean? Yes, he was. And yes, he is. Understand that Jesus was doing two things here that he often did, though not always in combination, in other places in the Gospels. First, he was deliberately modeling the closed culture and racist attitudes of his day in order to mock them by ultimately working against them. This woman's confession caught him before he could do that. And remember also, you know, that he loved to quote closed-minded proverbs to the keepers of the law. That's what's just happened prior to our reading this morning. He, he loved to then go on and violate those very proverbs by his actions. And then second, he was also doing with this woman what he so often did with others who were seeking him out for a, a quick favor. He was challenging her to see him as something more than just a traveling, itinerant medicine man handing out favors. He wanted her to confess her faith in God first. The fact that she did so, so quickly, and so, well, in such an amazing way, clearly surprised Jesus. 
she responded faster and bigger than he expected. So that's what happened here. This story, then, leads us to two observations this morning. And, and yes, I know you were expecting three, but, but there's only two. Two thoughts that have a lot to say to us about the condition of our own faith and Jesus' response to it. And here's the very first point, the importance of faith. You know, Jesus has, was always pleased with signs of faith wherever he found them, especially where they weren't normally to be expected. Not just with this Canaanite woman, but in Roman officials and even from scribes and Pharisees. It's obvious that to Jesus, faith in him is the central issue in life. In other words, what's important isn't so much where we belong as to whom we belong. You know, such a truth doesn't always sit well with everyone. Some people will carry attitudes in Jesus' name that would be horrendous to him. To Jesus, a person's faith, their commitment to God and to humanity is far more important than any particular dogma. So much of what people, so much of what closes people off from others is petty. You know, many of you know that in my college days, I sojourned among the Mennonites. I was welcomed as a brother in worship, and uh, I me, I was a guest in many of their homes in this country and in Europe. So here's a little tidbit. Do you know what ultimately split the Amish off from the Mennonites? Buttons. You see, the Mennonites, buttons were kind of a new thing, and the Mennonites looked at them and said, these are useful, therefore they're okay. And the Amish looked at them and said, well, these are chiefly decorative, therefore they're sinful. And so they separated. They split over buttons. <laughs> the Mennonites mostly like to tell that story. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a drunken young man who once came to visit Harry Emerson Fosdick. You know, Fosdick was one of the greatest preachers and Christian writers of the early and mid-20th century, and he was pastor of the Riverside Church in New York City. And the young man demanded that Fosdick explain to him the difference between modernism and fundamentalism. And, you know, that was the big debate of the day. And Fosdick agreed that he'd be glad to do it, but first the young man needed to go home and sober up. Whereupon the young man broke down in sobs, and he said, but when I'm sober, I really don't give a hoot about it. <laughs> How many fights have been fought over things that just don't really matter? There's only one thing that ultimately matters. It is the state of our heart, our soul, and our mind in relation to Christ and to one another. So that's the first observation this morning. The importance of faith. And here's the other. The importance of God's grace. You know, it really doesn't matter what our status is or where we come from or what label we wear. What ultimately matters is that God loves us as his own children. And Jesus has come in our behalf. Our faith in God would not mean anything if it were not in response to that grace, God's great love for us. During the Civil War, a large group of Confederate soldiers were held captive in Camp Morton in Nashville, Tennessee. And one day, a woman appeared at the gate and said that she needed to see her son. She had spoken with the Union Commandant and he had agreed to release her boy as planting season was upon them and she wouldn't be able to work the farm by, by herself, she walked into one of the camp barracks and she addressed the prisoners. I have teenage clothes for one of you. I haven't really got a son, but I can free one of you. 
Well, the prisoners got together and they chose one of their number. He put on the clothes and then walking arm in arm with his mother, say, he said this as he walked past the guards, Come, mother, we've got some plowing to do. <laughs> now, it's not a perfect analogy, but it is similar to something that God has done for us. God has adopted us as his own, and he has walked us to freedom. It isn't something that we have earned or deserved. We will never be able to live up to it, though in thankfulness we will have our whole lives to gratefully try. There is no favor to earn, just a gift to receive. All we can do is receive it and build our lives upon it. It is God's grace. Faith and grace. So where does that leave us this morning? It leaves us with the Canaanite woman. Confessing our faith. And receiving God's grace. In other words, it leaves us in a state of worship. Worshiping God and knowing our kinship with all humanity. The doors of heaven really are open wide. The doors of the church are to be too. So what about the doors to our own hearts? What about that? Well, may the grace of God open us to all whom we encounter. May our faith free us to share God's love with all whom he sends across our paths. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is with joy this day that before the sacrament of the Eucharist, we also experience the sacrament of holy baptism. And so now, would the candidate for holy baptism be now presented? Desire to be baptized. <laughs> Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? This is a question for all of us here. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Joyce in her life in Christ? Will you? We will. We will. Then let us join with her as she commits herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Would you rise? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the conscious power, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God shall help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God said. Let us now pray for Joyce, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into this fellowship Joyce, who has come to him in faith, baptizing her in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Joyce Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank, thank you, you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring, concerning heart, the courage and will and perseverance, your spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. with holy oil of chrism as a sign of your heart. Joyce, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Receive this candle as a symbol of the light that is now kindled in your soul. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
you're here this morning. We're glad to see you. It is a joyous day in the life of our church. And uh, we welcome all of you who are watching from home this morning as well. We're glad that you're able to join us. And we hope to see you before long. Uh, the um, announcements of upcoming events are in the back pages of the bulletin. Let me just highlight a couple things really fast. First off, the yard sale. And I think uh, Suzanne had something to say about that. Yes. Oh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So come on in after the service and see what uh, treasures you can take out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right. The shrimp fest, September the fifth. That's a Friday evening. Martha. Great, thank you. Uh, given by P Patricia, I believe. Yeah, yeah hi, Patricia. Did oh, okay. Will is her is his mother. Okay. Uh, don't forget, by the way, put this on your calendar. September the 14th is going to be kickoff Sunday. That's when everything goes back to normal time. This service moves to 11 o'clock, and Sunday school kicks up uh, in between for adults. And, uh, and uh, oh, hang on, Bill. And uh, our, our youth uh, group will be meeting right after the services starting on the 14th. Uh, Bill, did you want to put in a plug? Great. Thank you. Oh, yes, we are. A choir starts up. All of you, I, I know you're singing out here now, but I'm sitting with you. So, a choir starts on Wednesday the 3rd, 730, and a choir record is just behind. Ah, great. Jim? So we're, we're going to be prepared. It's like, it's like the bags that we have in the narthex. Uh, we, sometimes they get used and sometimes they don't. We will have Sunday school. If children come, we will have Sunday school for them. And so uh, we're just trying to be faithful and be ready for the Lord's blessing. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've had another event. Speaking of children coming into our church, uh, Todd and Devin Sitterson... I would have proudly announced the birth, as of yesterday, of their brand new daughter, baby girl. Her name is Caroline Grace. Uh, she is 7 pounds, 11 ounces, and 20 inches long. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be popping over to uh, uh, Moorhead Hospital to see them. They're going to be releasing her later today. And let's see, there was something else. Oh, yes! Um... I'm going on vacation. Uh, I've got two weeks coming, and uh, I need it. Uh, anyway, we're going to be going up to Virginia to see my, uh, our oldest daughter and her husband, who just moved there from California. And uh, we're going to be helping them move in their stuff. 
Uh, I'm so grateful that Christopher and his fiance and some other friends got there ahead of us and moved all the heavy stuff. So we just have to help them unpack and put things places. So we're, I'm really glad for that. Uh, next Sunday, the Eucharist, Paula Rochelle, it's, it's spelled Rachel, but it's, it's pronounced Rochelle, who is the associate rector at All Saints Greensboro is going to be here to preach and to conduct the Eucharist. And then on the 31st, Ches Kennedy is going to be here to preach, and we will have a morning prayer that morning. And I think that's all my announcements. Lemonade inside. Oh, lemonade on the lawn is going to be in the parlor. <laughs> where it's nice and pleasant and the air conditioning's on. So if you don't know how to get there, just go out these doors and come around to the other big doors on this side and come on in. There's cookies and lemonade and good fellowship. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Everything in heaven and on the earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. All things come from you, O Lord.
Christ in the good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ's South Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
page 17 of the bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia!